Hey, I'm Brian Goulet of GoulaPens.com, and today I'm here to talk to you about fountain pens that just don't seem quite as popular or discussed as we here at Goulet Pens think that they should be. These are all gonna be currently produced pens, all ones available through my store, because these are really the ones that I'm the most familiar with, and they're all ones that have been launched and in stock enough to have had enough time to actually earn a reputation and potentially be on the radar of the pen community. There are in fact several pens that I consider for this list that I decided not to put on here because I feel that they've been gaining in popularity recently, but I'll include those at the end of the video anyway, just in case you want my two cents on those. So with all the ground rules in place, here we go. Platinum Plaisir. The Platinum Preppy has long been a go-to starter fountain pen, one of the most affordable ones out there. And basically the Plaisir is like a preppy in a suit of armor. It's a fancier looking pen that's every bit as reliable a writer as the preppy, but in a more durable aluminum body and cap. At under $20, the Plaisir is a great deal. It's cheaper than the vast majority of fountain pens out there. I think though it unfairly gets compared too much to the preppy and it seems like a premium in price over the $6 preppy, which shares the same internal parts like the nib in the feed. You do have several color options to choose from with the Plaisir, which I think are all really nice. They have some great color choices. And frankly, I don't know why this pen isn't more popular. My guess is that some of what people like about the Preppy, the low cost, the clear body, and the ability to eyedropper convert it are all somewhat lost in the Plaisir. And I think it's not really given a fair shake because it's actually a pretty decent pen. And for what it's worth, my assistant Jen says that it's her go-to purse pen because it's super reliable and she can just toss it in with all of her stuff in there and it can withstand the abuse that her purse gives it. So she was pretty gung-ho about it making this list and getting some love. It doesn't come with a converter, which is a bummer because the Platinum proprietary converter isn't the cheapest, but even with that factored in, I do think that this pen is worth a look. The Sailor Compass High Ace Neo Calligraphy Pen. So this is sort of a calligraphy pen, which is kind of a specialty use, and I get that. With calligraphy fountain pens, typically what you see is cheaper pens sold at bookstores, arts and craft stores, things like that, maybe with multiple interchangeable nibs, and frankly, most of them just don't work that well. So they tend to get kind of a bad rep. But there's a couple of calligraphy pens out there that are great, and ones that are better known, like the Pilot Parallel and the Lamy Joy, I think are much more popular in the actual pen community. I think the High Ace Neo should be in the company with these pens as they all write pretty darn well. It's got a stainless steel stub nib in a 1.0, 1 1.5 and two millimeter width. It writes smooth and it's got pretty crisp line variation too. It kind of walks that balance between these two somewhat contradictory features nicely. They don't look like very expensive pens, I admit, but then they also aren't very expensive. So that's okay. It's priced right between the Pilot Parallel and the Joy, so it fits right in there. They do require Sailor's proprietary cartridges, but then both Pilot and Lamy also have their own proprietary ones, so that's kind of a wash in my mind. You can refill these cartridges with any ink that you want using an ink syringe, or you can add on a Sailor converter for eight bucks. This does fall under perhaps maybe a specialty use, but I think it's a good pen to consider as a starter pen, especially with the 1.0 millimeter nib size, because it gets you kind of a calligraphy look without having to learn actual calligraphy. And it's arguably more practical as a carry around pen than the Pilot and the Lamy ones, because it's not this long pointy thing. You can actually fit it in your pocket and it has a pretty usable clip as well. The Pilot Explorer. Much like the Plaisir can sometimes get overshadowed by the Preppy, I think the Pilot Explorer gets overshadowed by its more popular Metropolitan. The Explorer has only been around for a couple of years and it rides on the heels of the Metropolitan and the Kakuno. It shares the same nib and feed as both of these Pilot pens as well as the higher priced Prera. The Explorer is light, it's durable, reliable, and it comes in 12 different colors now after the addition of several new ones that came out last year in 2021. The number one reason why I think this pen is underrated is because it's the only one of any of the steel nib pilot pens that can accept the large Con70 converter. It's their largest ink capacity that holds over a milliliter of ink. And that converter doesn't come with it 
but it actually does come with a Con B converter, which is cool at this price because not all pens come with converters. So if you're into lighter pens with a big ink carrying potential, I would definitely give the Explorer a look. The Traveler's Brass Pen. This pen is pretty straightforward. It's one color, one nib size. This pen actually surprised me because it's really not a pen that I normally would like. It has a fine nib, which won't show off a lot of ink shading or shimmering very much, but darn it if it isn't super reliable. And it's really versatile on a lot of types of paper. It's a very thin pen, so I don't really use it for long writing sessions because it's a pocket pen, and boy is it a pocket pen. Normally all metal pens get really heavy, but this one's so small that it's really not that heavy, and you can stick it in your pocket and it doesn't really weigh you down. I think quite literally this is my favorite pocket pen because you really can't hurt it. It's so easy to cap and uncap and it doesn't get in the way when it's in your pocket. You can still get your hand in and out and use your keys and all that and it's not gonna hang up on the pen. It's cartridge only so you can't use any converter with it, even the mini versions of converters from other brands. So I personally end up using the standard international cartridge and I just refill it with an ink syringe and then I can use whatever bottled ink I want. You can let the brass patina naturally, which I like to do, or you can polish it up with a metal polish and keep it looking all shiny. It's gonna get a little bit scratch and stuff like that, wear and tear, but it's metal and that's okay. The biggest potential drawback to this pen is actually kind of a weird one. It's that it's such an unobtrusive pocket pen that you may accidentally run it through your washing machine when you're washing your clothes because you forget to take it out of there because it's so unnoticeable. I haven't actually done that yet, but I could, I'm could. i kind of paranoid about it. So yeah, just kind of be on the lookout for that. But otherwise it's an all around great pocket pen. The Twisby Vac Mini. I think the VAC Mini slips through the cracks because Twisby has so many other good options. The VAC 700R gets the attention for the VAC filling and its large ink capacity. The Twisby Mini gets the attention as kind of the pocket pen or the mini version of the 580. The VAC Mini, I think, kind of just gets overlooked, especially because Twisby hasn't really done any special edition color releases like they have for the other popular pens like the 580s, the Ecos, the Eco Ts. I think this is great because you get a huge ink capacity. At almost two milliliters, it's larger than any of the Twis Twisby Piston pens. But perhaps the one drawback to the VAC Mini is that the cap doesn't push to post. You have to screw it onto post. But at least that way it's secure. I think this is a really cool pen, one that gets overlooked, and it's definitely worth a look, especially if you like that vac filling mechanism. The Kaweco Supra. Now this is the bigger sibling to the Kaweco Lilliput, which is a cute little pocket pen. The Supra though is kind of a beast actually, and probably gets overlooked a bit because it's the most expensive Kaweco, at least that we carry. There are three things that I really like about this pen. One is that it's got a larger nib, a number six size nib, which you don't see very much on this brand. It can also take a full size standard international converter, which other Quakos are too short to fit. And it's fun to fiddle with, which I love. You can take this pen apart and reconfigure it. It's pretty cool. The middle of the pen body can actually be removed to make it a shorter pen if you wanna have more of that pocket pen, or you can leave that middle section in and be able to use that full-size converter. And it's crazy durable. It's got a couple of really cool material color options, including the wild fire blue, and that will likely be unlike any other pen in your collection. So the versatility of this pen makes it great as a pocket pen. It can also be a pretty solid desk pen. It's not gonna be for everybody, but I think it's really unique and one that you'd really appreciate if you got to know it better. The Pilot Decimo. So I'm a little conflicted about this one because it's actually more popular outside the US and some of the more recent colors have gotten it on more people's radar. But I think that the Decimo still lives deep in the shadow of the Pilot Vanishing Point and is probably worth calling out. Basically, it's a slightly slimmer, slightly lighter version of the Vanishing Point. And that's pretty much it. It uses the same nib unit, comes in some slightly different colors, and it hasn't been imported into the US in the last five or six years, so it just hasn't really been talked about quite as much. But I definitely think more people should try them out, especially if they think the Vanishing Point is too large in their hand. The Pilot Custom Heritage 92. We come to the final pen on our list here, the most expensive, and this pen I love, but I also understand pretty much why it isn't quite as popular. It's the price, especially when directly compared with the beloved Custom 74. It's the same nib and feed as the Custom 74, which is a full $60 less than this pen. 
This pen has a couple of things going for it though. It is a piston filler. It's the only piston filler in Pilot's line that I'm aware of, especially in the US at least. You really get to see the ink clearly, unlike any other Pilot pen, even the translucent ones when it's in a converter, you just don't see it as well. So this one, you get a full view of the ink. Though the ink capacity is pretty similar to the Custom 74, actually. That one's got the Con 70 converter. This one's a piston, but they're around 1.2 milliliters. And this one's got a flat top, which looks really cool. Though that's kind of subjective, but you don't see a lot of other Pilot pens that have that. It's also only available in clear in the US, whereas the Custom 74 is in a variety of other colors. So I would love to see more options in the 92, but it ends up being kind of caught in this loop where it's not super popular, so they don't bring in more colors. And because they don't have more colors, it's not quite as popular. What are you gonna do? So I do like this pen a lot, and I think it's a solid buy. It's a fantastic writer because it's the same as Custom 74, one of my notoriously favorite pens of all time, but it just comes across as a bit of a premium with just a few sort of subjective benefits over the Custom 74, though I still totally recommend it to anyone who's seriously considering it. So a couple of honorable mentions that didn't quite make the cut. First one is the Platinum Prefonte. This one is very similar to the Preppy. It's less expensive than the Plazier, so it kind of falls right in between the two. And it's got the same, they've been feeding in the same guts basically. Um, so it kind of just overlapped a little bit too much with these other two pens. Uh, but you know, that one could easily kind of fit in there as uh, getting overshadowed by the Preppy 2. The Pilot E95S. Though we've been talking about it for years and I've been touting the great features of it since it came out, it seems that Drew's recent love of it, given over in our Goulet Pencast, has finally gotten it over the hump. And I could probably still justify it as being underrated, but at the trajectory that it seems to be on, I don't think that it'll stay that way for very long. The Pilot Custom 823, this pen had been underrated for years, but it's been picking up steam really ever since 2017. And frankly, now it's pretty popular, very well loved, all justifiably so. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this list and maybe you came to appreciate some of these pens that you'd been overlooking. This is all pretty subjective stuff though, and I'm sure depending on where you spend your time in online circles, you could see or hear different things about these pens. So I'd love to know where I was spot on, where I was dead wrong, and are there other pens that you think don't get the attention that they deserve? Well, give them some love in the comments and we'll see if others agree. You can see all the pens that we talked about here at gouletpens.com where you can find lots of other fountain pens, ink, and paper things. Please like, comment, subscribe to our channel. It's been great spending time with you today. Thank you so much for watching and right on.